So what I want you to do now is to really ask yourself the more interesting question, which isn't, can we cut costs or increase efficiency with technology, but rather, what is now possible in an age of artificial intelligence that was simply not before? And I put it to you that there's a number of big shifts that are going to happen in our world in the next five to 10 years. The first shift I see is the shift from businesses to platforms. You know, you know what is a platform? Is a platform just a scaled up business? Is it just a business that's gotten faster and more laden with technology? I don't think so. There's something different about a company that sees itself as a platform. And for me, that difference is that platforms are able to constantly learn from all of their interactions with their customers. And they do that in a very scaled up way. I'll give an example. It's fascinating what's going on right now with e-commerce and retail. I mean, you're seeing, especially during the pandemic, so many resources now going into smarter warehouses, smarter pick and pack facilities, more intelligent, resilient supply chains. What's going on and why? I used to think this was just about lowering the total possible cost to the consumer, the speed of deliveries. In fact, I used to think that a company like Amazon used to have these giant Indiana Jones style warehouses somewhere. You know, like the, at the final scene in the movie where they're hiding the Ark of the Covenant, right? With everything ever made by human beings just waiting to ship out. I was really surprised because a couple of years back, I actually did some work for Amazon and I, I worked with their global logistics team. And I was shocked that in many cases, the item that you order is not even in stock until a few days before you order it. You see, an algorithm at Amazon, based on your data, predicts what you're going to order and actually brings it into the supply chain even before you knew you wanted it. Now that's crazy, isn't it? They've got a patent on it. They call it anticipatory shipping. I call it freaky as hell shipping. <laughs> and it's not just Amazon, it's a number of these big players now investing in this kind of technology. And can you imagine the very near future, you're gonna be, you know, be working from home. Okay, let's be honest, you're, you're doing some shopping. And, uh, you know, you're kind of hanging out, see, you can see some stuff you like, and you know, you're kind of, you're just about to click buy now, when suddenly you're distracted because you hear this, this kind of whirring sound outside your window, and you go outside, and there's one of these brand new yellow and black Amazon delivery drones descending from the sky, and you go, okay, this is, this is strange, I don't remember order anything, anyway. So it, it drops this parcel on your front yard, so you walk out and you get it, you look inside, and you merely drop it to the ground because there in the box was the very thing you were just looking at on your screen a minute ago. How did they know? Alexa. <clears throat> You're going to be running around the house in paranoia, right? Unplugging all your Alexa devices. I mean, you're already a bit suspicious, right? That Jeff Bezos, when he's not flying to the moon, is like listening on all your conversations. You needn't have been concerned. Amazon doesn't need to spy on you to understand what you want. By looking at your data, they know you better than you know yourselves. And that's not to say we can all become Amazons or all become giant platforms. But if you're going to play in a platform world, you yourselves have to be thinking, how do I go beyond just thinking about costs to using data to better understand my customers? And if you saw the, the deal that uh, Acumano did recently with Big Commerce to tap into Amazon's fulfillment program, this is the kind of scaled up thinking that's gonna be important in this new world. The second big shift for me is a shift from transactions to experiences. Now, what do all these brands and familiar apps have in common? Spotify, Uber, Netflix. For me, they've all done an amazing job and making you forget the underlying financial transaction. I mean, think about it. What did you pay for your last Uber ride? Do you have any idea? A few people do. You're in the accounting department, aren't you? <laughs> okay, you're forgiven. Uh, what do you pay on average on Netflix if you think about all the movies you watch and divide it by your subscription cost? Or Spotify for all the music you listen to? I mean, it's a ridiculous question. You don't even really pay attention. And that's because the experience is so good that you no longer really think about the money. That's the power of moving from transactions to experiences. And it's not just these born in the cloud apps. It's companies like 
Starbucks as well. I mean, Starbucks is not a coffee company. It's a data-driven technology platform. And this is not a new thing. I mean, if you look really at the, when, they, when Starbucks came out of the financial crisis in 2008, they started heavily using data to improve their site selection and to really understand the effectiveness of their individual uh, real estate portfolio. And then that, of course, morphed into the use of loyalty programs and mobile payment. They now have a program called Deep Brew. So they're actually using artificial intelligence to automate more of the running of the coffee shop. Now, they're not trying to get rid of the barista, right? But what they're hoping is that by using things like voice recognition, that when someone comes up to place an order, then they've got one of those ridiculous, highly personalized orders. If you're one of those people, you know who you are, right? You've seen it on a TikTok video or something, right? Uh, the, the machine is actually listening to you. So by the time you finish ordering, it's already ready. And this is the kind of ways in which we can now leverage technology to go beyond just counting costs, to thinking about customer experience. The third shift for me is the shift from data to insights. And this is where you become a different type of organization. In, in the last couple of years, Uber has actually launched 7,000 new restaurants. These are restaurants that have no physical form at all. Uh, they run in ghost kitchens. So if you can imagine these giant warehouses of people preparing food for restaurants that don't exist. Because what Uber Eats realized was that by looking at all the data of people searching for like fusion Korean Tex-Mex in Austin, that there was an opening for a restaurant that actually needed to exist. So they were able to use that data to creatively invent new opportunities. And it's not just Uber Eats, there are a number of companies now who are transforming data to become different types of organizations. Another really interesting example from the building industry is a company called BuildOps from Israel. They've started putting uh, head-mounted cameras uh, on construction crews. So the idea is, is that as the, the, the construction workers are moving around a site, they're actually updating a real-time model of the building, a kind of a digital twin, which can be matched against the, uh, the digital CAD files. And this allows them to not only get a sense in real time of the progress of construction or whether all the, you know, the electrical sockets have been put in the right place or not, this actually flows through to risk management and it's tied into your ability to draw down more uh, uh, amounts of money from your loan tranches from a bank. Totally transforms site mismanagement costs, which McKinsey estimates cost upwards to $1.7 trillion a year. So when you bring these ideas together, for me, it's pretty clear that the digital transformation of the world has begun. This new era of AI-powered competition will reshape the future of business. Now is the time to invest in the digital capabilities supporting your own digital transformation.